going on, guys? It's Wednesday, and uh, feeling a little under the weather, but uh, I figured I'd bring you a playthrough anyway. Game I picked today is, you know, based upon one of the best TV shows on uh, TV right now. So, uh, you know, as such, I figured the game would be really great, too. The game is called The Walking Dead. Technically, it's called a Telltale Game series of The Walking Dead. Now... I mean, I knew a few things when I picked this game up. I knew that I was going to be killing zombies. And I knew that it wasn't based upon the TV show. Sadly, after playing it for five minutes, I really wish it would have been based upon the TV show. Um, well, let's see. Plot starts out kind of like this. You're this guy, this big black guy, Lee. And you are driving down the road in the back of a police car. <coughs> he is taking you to prison because you allegedly, or, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure he did kill her. I don't know. He killed some guy who was banging his wife is basically what I got out of it. So he's driving on the road in the back of the police car and they're taking him to prison. When all of a sudden this creature, walker if you will, walks out in the middle of the street Police car swerves off the road, everybody passes out, and then it looks like they wake up like a day later, I don't know, and he's in the back of the police car, hurt. He then proceeds to go look for help, finds this little girl, Clementine, while, you know, killing her babysitter in the house, I believe, or something like that. I don't really know. But he kind of teams up with this little girl, and the rest of the story proceeds as, you know, he is doing various little problems or uh, they kind of try to make it into a platformer where you have tasks to do and you know stuff to worry about other than just oh kill the zombies and run and uh, I mean that's cool and all it makes another little interesting dynamic to it but it's just the way they do it that kind of like makes me kind of turned off to it I mean you can probably tell by the tone of my voice that I didn't really enjoy this game um you know, I gave it about three hours, and I'm feeling kind of sick, so that's more patience than I needed to have with it to tell that it was not that great. Now, see, the funny thing is, when I read reviews about this game online, it just gets phenomenal reviews. Phenomenal reviews all the way through the roof, like it's the best game in the world. And, you know, it might be, considering I haven't read the, uh, you know, comic book or whatever the show is originally based, I think it is based on a comic book. And, you know, I haven't read anything like that because I'm not really into comics, more into games. But, um, being somebody who didn't read the comics and somebody who just is a fresh eye just looking upon it, I can tell you right now, I didn't like it. And, uh, but before I get into things that I didn't like, let me just cover a few things that I did. And let me tell you, there was only a few. Uh, first of all, I mean, the first thing I liked that it was The Walking Dead. I immediately saw it, picked it up, was like, oh my god, gotta play this, it's gonna be amazing, we're gonna kill zombies, we're gonna, you know, tag a, tag a, or um, team up with other people and uh, just fuck shit up, I don't know, dude, we're just gonna kill zombies and it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be a little dr drama in there and it's gonna just flow and it's gonna look good, feel good, it's gonna be an emotional ride, but I'm ready for it. But that was not, I mean, it is sort of what you get, but it isn't really what I had in mind. And uh, another reason, you know, I picked it up, obviously, you get to fight zombies. I mean, there's a billion ways to do it. There's a billion games that do it. Going back all the way to the freaking SNES with Zombies Ate My Neighbors. There are a billion games that, you know, plot the uh, remaining survivors against zombies. And uh, this is not one that, you know, that didn't do it as well. I mean, because it did it, obviously, it's The Walking Dead. But it just didn't do it to where I'd hoped it would be doing it. Like, it's not as good as uh, I would have liked it to be. Considering the reviews I read, uh, I just, I'm not in it, guys. I'm really not about it. So let's get to a couple things I didn't like. Um, well, obviously, the way the game is set up is really huge to me. And you'll hear every week when I do these videos that I mention something that I like is the controls of a game. And the reason I always say that, and I know it probably gets a little redundant at times, but the reason I say that is because when you come to a game where the controls are terrible, it stands out right away. Right a freaking way. 
There is no way. It, it's just basically just an eyesore, something, just a little needle stabbing you in the eye the rest of the game, because it's it's a it's like a handicap, if you will, and it's terrible. I hate it. Now, I'm not saying the the controls are really really terrible, but they were pretty close. Um, basically, this game, the way they set it up, it's not really like you know just gung ho, nice fight scenes or anything. No, this is basically. They try to make it into a point-and-click kind of platformer where you're just going around, you know, solving people's problems, getting this guy some medicine, getting some keys to the pharmacy, getting this, getting that, getting that, and then it's just like they take away from what it really is. And you spend more of the game like talking to the people and figuring stuff out about them so they see you in a good light than you actually do like, you know, playing the game. And <clears throat> like I like dialogue in a game. I like stuff that you know, pulls the person in to play the game. But there is such a thing as too much dialogue or too much story, and you saw that very well when I went over the Puppeteer video. Um, now, another thing I don't really like about it is how the game looks, guys. How it looks, it's just... I, you know, with these brand new systems and new games and all these graphic capabilities and everything that we have these days, it's amazing to see that they still make games like this. And I'm not dogging on, like, the lower bit resolution games or anything. Because, you know, some of the brand new games just coming out even now are going to be, like, side-scroll beat-em-ups. They're going to look like 8-bit or 16-bit games for the SNES. So there's nothing wrong with that. But, like, the way they made this game look, they could have just done so many more things. They could have made this look so much better, and they just really... I guess they adapted more the graphic novel look to it because to be honest I wasn't feeling it and um, I wasn't feeling it from the get-go I didn't really like it and I didn't really like the the zombies you know they all look the same they all get their eyes chewed out and they look like freaking demons they don't really look like zombies they don't look anything like you know true walking dead stuff and um I say that with a grain of salt, like I said, because I've never read the comics. I just watch the show. But I do like the show, and they do, you know, very well <laughs> on, like, <laughs> recreating different zombies. And this one, it was more like every single zombie kind of looked the same. It was just like, oh, this one is a guy, this one is a girl. And it was just, that's basically all you could really tell. But they all looked the same pretty much other than that. You know, a few had, like, decapitated, not decapitated, but they were missing limbs. I guess they were severed limbs or whatever but it, they, there wasn't a whole lot of variety in your zombies guys it was just a whole bunch of the same if you ask me and it looked really the same and I, I didn't really like it I didn't really like just a lot of how it looked struck me as this could have been done better and I know you know I'm being super nitpicky I just it's just not something I would take my time to play um <coughs> let's see Another thing I didn't like is the fact that every single fight, everything you do when you're fighting a zombie or anything like that in this game, they're basically non-existent. You know, it's so it's so third person. They try to pull you away from what is actually happening. And most horror games want you right in the seat. They want you right there because they want you to feel the fear and the, you know the the angst and you know the the rush of a. Uh, adrenaline just because you're trying to get out and everything with this game it just felt really really third person it wasn't very like scary or anything it never it never really took me by surprise everything that happened I was just like oh saw that coming and um to be honest it just it wasn't very surprising nothing really pops out at you and then the fight scenes themselves it's just basically you just click 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 and that's all, that's all it does. I mean, it is done that way in a lot of games. Yes, it is done that way in a lot of games. But a lot of games do it a lot better than that. It just... And it has something to do with the fact that you had to line the cursor up with it to click on the right spot. And if you don't do it in time, then you die. I mean, that's fine and all, but... It just... Even the fights seemed really point and click to me. And honestly, I'm not about that. When I want to fight somebody, I just want... Get the cursor out of the way, and I want just top, 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 top. I just want to take him out. I don't want any kind of cursor in the way where I gotta like, oh, look down there, his leg. I'll scroll. I was saying basically, the um, fight scenes are still non-existent. They basically make it where it wants to be a point-and-click little thing, 
and it doesn't need to be that way. Like, like I said, if if I want to fight somebody, you don't see him putting a cursor on him in like Street Fighter, like oh, aim for the leg or aim for the crotch or aim for the eyeball. They just they just don't do it. And the idea that they did that in this game kind of is is different. And you know, it is sort of I wouldn't go so far as to say it's revolutionary. But if it is revolutionary, it's a bad revolution that needs to be changed immediately and taken back to the old school ways of doing it. We've been doing it right so far. Let's let's keep it the way we got it. <clears throat> Another thing I didn't like about this game, sadistic choice. Every other 20 minutes in this game, I found myself having to choose between two people in this group or a group that I'd found or a group that I'd just joined, two people that... You know, probably one saved me a minute ago and another one is helping me right now. And <clears throat> I have to decide which of these people is going to die. Which of these people do I save? And the thing is, even if you choose to save that one, they might still die. So it doesn't really matter who you choose. Now, the first time you do this, it's actually Herschel's son and this kid, Duck. Now... <clears throat> The funny thing is, I chose to save Herschel's son. You know, he drove me to the farm. You know, he helped me out a lot. He helped me out a great deal. I thought you'd be crazy not to choose him over some little kid that you don't know anything about. But, funny thing is, you know, even when you choose to save him, Duck gets saved by his daddy. And then Herschel's son, you know, he winds up getting killed regardless of whether you choose to save him or not. So it really doesn't matter. And the second time you get a choice, it's actually... Um, this guy who just is in the town where you're at in the drugstore, and his name is Doug. And just before you get to choose, he's like, oh, man, hey, you know, you're a good guy. Thanks for everything. And then uh, all this, he's like sucking up to you or whatever. And then this other girl, she's some <coughs> TV reporter, and actually Doug saved her. And she's a really good shot with a gun. And the choice is between them two. Now, I chose Doug the second time around, not necessarily because, like, it wasn't necessarily because I thought Doug was the better person, and it wasn't necessarily that I thought the other chick was a bad person, because she did have dirt on you, because she's a reporter, so she knew that you actually were being, you know, convicted or whatnot, and she knew of your history, and, uh, you know, she kind of told you that well, she wasn't going to tell anybody, so you're kind of just trusting her on a whim, and the thing is, that's fine. I didn't have any beef with that. It's just, I kind of thought, since she had a gun, since she's a good shot, I was like, well, hell, I'll save Doug, and, you know, maybe she'll find a way to save herself. Because the last time I tried to save somebody, they died anyway, and the other one wound up being saved. You know, it doesn't make sense, because if you're going to present somebody with a sadistic choice, at least let the choice they chose, you know, be the one that survives. And they can just adjust the story accordingly. Now, I understand if it's a uh, big deal, then it can't happen regardless. But if it's not, then, you know, just let it happen. Screw it. Let's see where it goes. And that's another thing I didn't like about this game. <clears throat> every other two seconds, every other two seconds, you are making a choice. A choice about what to say or what not to say or who to talk to, and then maybe they'll trust you or maybe they won't trust you. Maybe they'll think you're loyal. Maybe they'll think you're bad. You know, it's just constantly like a popularity game. Like, it is a popularity game within the Walking Dead game. And it's because you're trying to, you know, present yourself as a good person to all these people. I didn't care about any of that crap, guys. I don't care if they think I'm the worst person in the world. You know, if I'm saving people, if I'm getting stuff done, they're going to see you in that light, regardless of what you say. <clears throat> Everybody knows actions speak louder than words, and that holds true to even video games. So, another thing I didn't like about the questions and the choices is the choices they give you this little like time bar that counts down and if you don't click a choice within the time frame you know it just says nothing for you which nothing silence is a response on pretty much every single question and I have no problem with that the problem I have is if I really want to say something and I can't read all the choices because they're freaking too long or the timers counting down too fast and I have no idea I have no idea what I just said because I, I basically half the time I wind up just clicking buttons and whatever he says fine screw it we'll go along with it because I didn't have the time to read the choice. Like, if you're going to present someone with a choice, give them enough time to respond. Is That's another peeve I have with this game, and they do it incessantly. <clears throat> and lastly, and probably the biggest concern I have with this game, yeah, I'm pulling out my phone, 
And um, I'll show you why in just a second. <clears throat> Probably the fact that the biggest beef that I have with this game is the fact that you have to spend money on it. And I know that's a big concern because, you know, you're not getting anything for free. But you really can. If you actually pull out your iPhone, go to the Apple Store or the, um, uh, I guess the App Store instead of the Apple Store, you can actually get The Walking Dead game. The same game, the same game for absolutely free. Absolutely free, guys. Why, why would you pay money? I mean, I paid money. And I'm here to tell you, don't pay the money. Don't pay the money. Do not buy this game. If you really want to play it that bad, play it on your phone. Play it on your phone, guys. I swear to God, it is... It's almost better adapted for the phone. The way the little, like, scroll around is. You know, and you're looking around. Basically, I thought it was going to be better on the console. Because I played the phone one first. And then I was like, well, the game's probably not exactly like this. But no, it's exactly like it. So, if you want to save a little money, and you still want to know what the Walking Dead Telltale series looks like, just go to your Apple Store and download it. Pretty sure it's on the Android market, too, because they get all the stuff we don't get. So, well, that's really all i got to say about this game, guys. Um, for me, it's a big two thumbs down. I didn't like it. I probably won't even, even finish the game, honestly. Probably won't finish it on my phone or on the game. And that's just because I didn't like the way they presented things, I didn't like the way they did things, and the whole point and click thing, it's been done, and it's, it just, <coughs> it reminded me kind of like an I Spy book, to be honest. I just don't really like it at all. And, um, you know, that's really all I got to say about that. Like I said, if you really want to play it, download it on your phone. That's the way to go. The console is just not as good. I mean, it is probably a little better on the console, but you can't deny the fact that getting it for free is a lot better than paying for it. So, that's a moot point. Alright, well, that's all I got for this week. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, post them below in the comments box. And uh, if you have any games of any videos you'd want me to do, just uh, send me a comment below and I'll get right on it, guys. As always, <clears throat> keep gaming and keep exploring.